Let's be frank about what this is all about. What this is really all about for Democrats is political gamesmanship. The New York Times essentially admitted as much today when they acknowledge that basically Democrats have a win-win scenario. Either Trump is convicted, in which case they get a big victory, not going to happen, or Trump is not convicted, in which case they've had a chance for a couple of weeks to beat up on Republicans. And in the future, they get to, to tie Republicans in PR fashion to what happened on January 6th. So they think, well, there is one possibility that this backfires, and that is the longer that it goes on, the less the American people seem to love it. So here's what the polls show right now. According to the New York Times, a majority of Americans support convicting Trump on an impeachment charge over his role in the Capitol riot on January 6th, only by a very slender margin, according to a range of recent polls. While there's broad agreement, Trump deserves at least some blame for the violence at the Capitol. The country remains more closely split over whether he deserves to be convicted by the Senate. In fact, the views around this impeachment trial aren't very different from how things looked a year ago when public opinion was tilted slightly in favor of removing Trump from office during his first impeachment trial. Democrats have since gained control of the Senate, but they need a bunch of Republicans to vote with them. Basically, the split is 56-44 in a CBS News YouGov poll. 56% of Americans saying that Trump should be convicted, 44% saying he should be acquitted. But there are other polls that are way narrower. There are 12% of Americans who said they have no opinion on this, and only 47% of Americans saying they're in favor of the impeachment, 40% opposed, according to the AP. A Q poll, Quinnipiac University, found last week that 50% of Americans said the Senate should convict Trump, 45% said that it should not. Okay, so bottom line is that Americans seem to be pretty split on this particular issue. Uh, and as time goes on, and as it becomes apparent that Trump is no longer in office, and as Congress continues to basically just posture, I think more and more Americans are going to say this is kind of a waste of time. That's the reason why Chuck Schumer is rushing this thing forward. He had an interest in getting this thing done fast. Right? He wants a quick strike, PR hit, gets to use this for the rest of time to smear the Republican Party with. That is his goal here. Then, of course, he says he's doing this in the name of unity, which, of course, is very, very silly. Here is Chuck Schumer, the, uh, the Democratic Senate Majority Leader, saying that, um, you know, we can't move on because that, that's not going to bring unity. Yes, apparently only unity can be achieved by trying to lump every Republican in with the January 6th rioters, which is really what, from a PR level, from a comms level, communications level, that's what this trial is really all about. It's not about Trump. And Trump is a background figure almost in this trial at this point. Here is Chuck Schumer saying hypocritically that it's not going to bring unity to move beyond the trial. Listen, I don't think that unity is the highest value. I really don't. But if your case is that in order for us to achieve unity, we have to push forward with an impeachment that half the country doesn't support, that's a weird way to achieve unity. Here is, a, here is Chuck Schumer. Those who say let's move on, that brings unity, are false. When you had such a serious invasion of the Capitol, incited by a president, when you have such a serious charge, sweeping it under the rug will not bring unity. It will keep the sore open and the wounds open. Okay, so here is my favorite part of the, uh, the constitutional argument being made by Democrats. So one of the things they're now considering is blatantly unconstitutional. If the impeachment trial fails, one of the things that they are currently considering is the possibility of invoking the 14th Amendment, okay, which could be done by pure majority vote to bar Trump from running for office ever again. Section three of the 14th Amendment allows Congress to bar individuals from holding office if they have, quote unquote, engaged in insurrection. They included that in the impeachment charge itself. But Trump did not, quote unquote, engage in insurrection. He left office as provided by law on January 20th with no sort of official support. To bar him from office at this point would be pretty obviously a constitutional bill of attainder. As Ed Morrissey writes over at Hot Air, nothing in the language of the 14th Amendment confers authority on Congress to do anything except waive a particular prohibition. It prohibits people who have committed certain crimes from holding federal office. Nothing in this denies these people from having due process in a court of law to make that determination of guilt in the first place. Because the fact of the matter remains that you have to have due process of law in order to punish somebody this way. Congress is not a court in any mode other than impeachment. Democrats know it, by the way. Right? The, the fact is Democrats know this, but they don't really care. Right? Steve, Steve Cohen is a Democrat from Tennessee. And he said, I know there's some concern about it being a bill of attainder. I'm not concerned about that because what he did was horrific. And th this is the way the Democrats tend to think. I don't really care about the constitutionality argument. So it, two things can be true at once, as, ve as very often is true. It can be constitutional to hold an impeachment trial after a person has left office. Also, the people who are arguing that cannot care very much about the Constitution. <laughs> that can certainly be a possibility. Did you know that every like on this video creates one additional leftist tier? Don't ask me why. That's called science. To take advantage of this amazing opportunity, hit the like button.